O Lord, correct me, but with judgment, not in thine anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hello, good evening, welcome to our Eventong here at St Mary's Halesworth. We'll open our service with our first hymn, which is uh, Hills of the North, if you like to follow and you have the orange book to hand. It's number 282, 282. I'm hopeful, just to click on that, that we'll be able to hear it through the church's system, which has a little bit more poke to it than my tablet here. Hills of the North rejoice. <laughs> of the north rejoice, echoing songs arise. Hail with united voice, him who made earth and skies. He comes in righteousness and love, he brings salvation from above. Isles of the southern sea, Sing to the listening earth, carry on every breeze, hope of a world's new birth. In Christ shall all be made anew, his word is sure, his promise true. Lands of the east arise, he is your bride. Morn. Greet him with joyous eyes, praise shall his prophet adorn. The God whom you have longed to know in Christ draws near and calls you now. Shores of the utmost worst, lands of the setting firm. Welcome the heavenly guest in whom the dawn has come. He brings a never-ending light to triumph for a darkest night. Shout as you journey on, songs be in every mouth. Lo, from the north they come, from east and west and south. In Jesus all shall find their rest, in him the longing earth be So please take your seat. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, Yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefit that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you as many as are here present to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. So we say together the general confession. Almighty and most merciful Father, 
We have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and to pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord, the Lord's name be praised. And so having just stood up over there, if you'd like to sit down again, and I will read you the psalm. As I say, apologies for not uh, printing these out for you. The Psalms are 46 and 47. God is our hope and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will, will we not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the hills be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof rage and swell, and though the mountains shake at the tempest of the same, the rivers of the flood thereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most Highest. God is in the midst of her, therefore shall she not be removed. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen make much ado, and the kingdoms are moved. But God hath showed his voice, and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. O come hither, and behold the works of the Lord. What destruction he hath brought upon the earth. He maketh wars to cease in all the world. He breaketh the bow, and nappeth the spear in sunder, and burneth the chariots in the fire. Be still then. And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen, and I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Clap your hands together, all ye people. O sing unto God with the voice of melody. For the Lord is high and to be feared. He is the great King upon all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose out an heritage for us 
even the worship of Jacob, whom he loved. God is gone up with a merry noise, and the Lord with the sound of the trump. O sing praises, sing praises unto our God. O sing praises, sing praises unto our King. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. God reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon his holy seat. The princes of the people are joined unto the people of the God of Abraham. For God, which is very highly exalted, doth defend the earth as it were with a shield. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the third chapter of the book of Joshua. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim, and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host, and they commanded the people, saying, When ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about two thousand cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go, for ye have not passed this way heretofore. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spake unto the priests, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant and pass over before the people. And they took up the ark of the covenant and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in Jordan. And it came to pass, when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan, and the priests bearing the ark of the covenant before the people, and as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all its banks all the time of harvest, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon an heap very far from the city Adam, that is beside Zaratan. And those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, failed and were cut off. And the people passed over right against Jericho. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. Here endeth the first lesson. So we join together and read the Magnificat, if you would like. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers Abraham and his seed for ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the first chapter of the book of Hebrews. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Who, being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. 
For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he saith, Who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? But unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is for ever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest. They shall all wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up. And they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. Shall we say the Nunc Dimittis together? Now, Lord, let us thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <coughs> Just catch up with myself in my book. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the King, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. We collect for the first Sunday after the Epiphany. O Lord, we beseech thee mercifully to receive the prayers of thy people which call upon thee, and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfil the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servant that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, Defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. 
for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we sing again. <coughs> Just uh, checking my running order. And uh, this is one that I found in a slightly separate place. So let's see how we go. 152, number 152. Earth has many a noble city. 152. Got to uh, tell it to talk to the main speaker system again. Let's go. I think this is just an introduction. So please take your seat. <coughs> so we're in the season of Epiphany, and uh, that means sort of uh, the revelation, the penny dropping. We've got it, we understand. And um, it follows uh, Christmas in the Western calendar, the Eastern calendar, it is Christmas Day, so the Orthodox have Christmas today because we use, whichever one it is, the Gregorian, they use the Julian or the other way around. Um, and so the 12 days of Christmas sort of link 20, using the 25th of December as Christmas Day and using the 8th of January, as we would call it, as Christmas Day. I don't know whether they would still call it the 25th of December now, but one way or another, we've got those 12 days between the West, Roman Church, which we're sort of more closely associated with, and the Orthodox, which, who are having Christmas today. So happy Christmas to all of you Orthodox people. And for us, we talk about the idea in Epiphany of uh, God who was revealed to the Jews in Jesus, who should have been expecting Jesus, God, Messiah. Um, and Epiphany is broadened out to the rest of us, the unlikely lads, the Gentiles, those who we wouldn't expect to see worshipping at the temple, worshipping in the, our village or town church of a Sunday. The magi, the magicians, the kings, call them what you will, they weren't necessarily three, they weren't necessarily male, 
although I guess that's quite likely, but we think of them as being three because only three gifts were mentioned, even though we are told they bring their treasure chests. So there must have been more than just those three. And those three let us know as a coded message that uh, they would have been smells and sights and sounds of the Jewish people as they worshipped in the temple. So it's a way of saying, without saying it, um, that Jesus is God. And they turn up and they ask for the king and they cause worry and trouble amongst those who they ask because as now, Jerusalem is, was a very uh, unstable mix of power, of privilege. Um, so Herod was only, only had his power because of Rome, and Rome only had its power because of the way it established its sort of peace of Rome across its empire. And even today, there are powers that would be upset and concerned if we said, well, actually, we believe that uh, God is in charge and not you and that we think you should be paying attention to what God stands for, peace, love, justice, and truth, and light, rather than those things, perhaps, that uh, they are looking to achieve and establish. Our psalms speak into that. God is our hope and strength, a very present help in trouble. I'm not a great expert in the psalms, but an easy way of getting into uh, when they were written and for whom is to understand that if it says God is our hope and strength, it is likely that it was written to or for people who needed to know, as they were in trouble, that God is our hope and strength. And so it is for us today, turning into this new year after last year. There may be things and people we have lost. There may be hopes and fears that we are facing. And we need to know, and the world around us needs to know, just as those foreigners coming to visit Jesus and understood him to be the hope. So we need to understand that others need to hear that as much as we do. The heathen make much ado, but God hath showed his voice further on in that same psalm. In 47, we open with clap your hands, all ye people. All the nations are expected to recognise the joy, the hope and love of God. And there is, or there are, church people in all the nations of the world. And it is my hope and prayer that where the church is, people are blessed and encouraged by those ideas of peace, love, joy, justice and hope even in the face of powers and principalities that would bring oppression and uh, difficulty and poverty and exclusion. Our first prose Bible reading comes from Joshua, which is in the history section. Uh, it uh, follows on after the first five books of the Hebrew scriptures, the law. We've just had Moses leading people around in the wilderness. He hands over the baton to Joshua. And uh, this is Joshua leading God's people over the water into the promised land. Moses was told he would, but uh, he hit a rock three times rather than once or some such, and God was cross with him, so he wasn't allowed to fulfil his purpose. Great challenge to those of us who are in leadership, that uh, what we aim for, we know we may not actually achieve. I remember years ago doing a retreat, and it was the first time I did a retreat as a vicar, and always in the past I thought of myself as being a follower but on this occasion, I was thinking of myself as being, as Jesus, a leader. And uh, I realised that at the end of Jesus' ministry, all the people that he'd led and were friends with left him to die alone. So it occurred to me that actually, if that's how successful God was in earth, then um, if I achieve at least that, then I won't be doing too badly by God's grace. But here we have a story where the priests lead God's people. The Ark of the Covenant is an expression of God's presence, just like this um, processional cross that I'm standing next to here. It isn't God, it oughtn't to be worshipped, but it is an expression of God, just as these church buildings in which we use for worship. Uh, God is not contained within them, but they stand for both all that is good and some that has been bad in the way that we have used our faith and our understanding of our self-worth in this town and around the world. But the church building stands for hope, truth, love, joy, peace. And people know that and come and sit quietly. They give money. They engage with the cleaning the brasses, not so much these days, but uh, arranging the flowers. Because the building stands for something we can't necessarily put into words, but it's important and it is special to us. And sometimes those waters that seem to overwhelm can be cleared away, stopped from flowing. They might be floods of tears or floods of storms in our lives. But we might come and sit quietly in a church as an expression like the Ark of the Covenant, like the priests standing at the shore of that flood water, and find actually a moment of security 
and peace. And we as church people perhaps should recognise that from time to time. We might come into our church and find somebody sitting in our seat. We might be expecting to do some cleaning, but they're sitting quietly and praying. We need to give them room and perhaps turn around and come back later ourselves, because this is as much their church, the foreigner, the unexpected visitor, as it is ours, the regular Sunday by Sunday, or even more frequent attender than that. When I was at my college, we had prayer stalls, which were for each of us, but we were told in no uncertain terms that if we turned up and there was a visitor sitting in our chair, we were to go and sit somewhere else and not harumph. And our second Bible reading from Hebrews, or lesson as we call it, in these uh, even some traditional services, the second lesson from Hebrews. Hebrews is a book written to encourage God's people who were from a Jewish background to stick with their Christian faith rather than go back to the security of the old order where they were a recognised religion in a recognised community. And in this passage we are told of the supremacy of Jesus and the whole book of Hebrews is a, an argument for how important and how significant Jesus is. The majority of it compares Jesus to figures from the Hebrew Scriptures, but here Jesus is compared to angels, and it is of interest to me because it's not uncommon for some people if they move on from just saying they're not religious. After a bit of a conversation or a pint or two, they might start to say, well, they do believe in angels. They might not believe in God, but they do believe in angels and might even talk of experiences of how angels have been with them or helped or supported or directed or blessed them. They may say, I have a very dear friend who would pray to angels. And the writer here is saying, well, angels are significant, angels are important, but the argument of the writer here is that actually Jesus is greater. Unto which of the angels did God say at any time, you are my son, this day have I begotten you? There is something about sonship, about being a child of a parent that is more than just being a creation of the parent. We can't really make a direct comparison, but if a mum bakes a cake, it's not quite the same thing as a mum having a child. Quite how the angels came into being at the word of God, we don't know. But there is a relationship of service, arguably, with the angels. God says to the angel, go and do this. The word means messenger. They are sent ones. But a child and a parent relationship is not that sort of directive. It's about being together. It's about blood. It's about belonging and certainty, the pain and the past and the future. And Jesus is a part of God because Jesus is God's son and we are given this reading today as it concludes they shall perish the angels the world and all that it stands for waxing old as a garment but you remain thou remainest the idea of the writer here is the angels are here Jesus is here a son not just a servant and also that God will remain even as the angels will pass away in his writing. And we might be concerned about our passing, our ageing, the futility perhaps of those things we put our trust in. But the writer here is arguing, put your trust in this Jesus whom the wise men recognised, the magi, the sorcerers, coming from miles away, putting their time and effort into finding out more about who this person is, this ruler, this king, that has adjusted the cosmos and changed the course of human history. That same God, that same Jesus, is here, is there for us, standing in the floods to make a way where there was no way, lasting forever with the power to call us children of God, that we can be in that covenant relationship, knowing we're cared for, knowing, knowing we're loved, knowing we are important. And how significant is that to those amongst whom we live today who don't feel good enough, well enough, clever enough, pretty enough. Even as uh, Rishi Sunak has said, we need to do math till we're 18. That would have finished me off, I know, back in the day. God is, as he said to Jesus, this is my child 
in whom I am well pleased. We need to hear, know and say that in our communities to those who feel otherwise lost and excluded, not worthy of going to church, of hearing God's words of peace, joy, hope and love. That the angels sang over the shepherds, God's goodwill is for all on whom God's favour rests. Amen. And so, to our Think Fourth and Final Hymn. No, maybe not. It's our third hymn, <clears throat> which is Thou Whose Almighty Word. And I think I might be saying that. Yes, so we have some prayers. So that is number. Uh, here's the mighty word, number 684, 684. O Heavenly Father, we thank Thee that by our baptism we have been made members of Thy great family, the Church, and we pray that we may grow up to be faithful members of that family and learn to love and serve Thee better for Jesus Christ's sake. O Thou who hast taught us that we are most truly free when we lose our wills in Thine, help us to attain to this liberty by continual surrender unto Thee, that walking in the way which thou hast prepared for us, we may find our life in doing thy will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
O thou in whom we live and move and have our being, we offer and present unto thee ourselves and all that we are and have, our thoughts and our desires, our words and our deeds, to be a living and continual sacrifice. We are not our own, therefore we would glorify thee in our bodies and our spirits which are thine. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We take a minute of quiet to bring our own petitions to the throne of the heavenly grace. Let us pray. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. So to our final hymn. What child is this, which is number 729, 729. Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen. <clears throat>